Hello, this is a new video for the Hair Shader 2.0 system. Uh, uh, what I've got here is some wigs that I found from uh, a resource. Um, I believe this is some wigs from a game character. <clears throat> uh, so what I'm going to do is apply the textures ca that came with it onto, uh, onto each of these and show you how you can modify them. So if you've got existing hair already, on a character or your artist use, uses a certain system then uh, this kind of works all round uh, albeit there, there is some maps that could be altered to suit this better so there is um, the different kinds of shader there's a simple shader and there's the more advanced one where it accepts extra maps so in this example, I'm just going to show you how to get the best from existing stuff. If you've already pre-made hairs in a different version of your game and you want to use this shader, then I'm just going to show you how to you know, get the best of them for this shader. So here we've got some blonde hair. I'm going to copy that and make some brown hair. So most of the settings are good. See, I've got two, two different uh, hair hair bundles here so I need to apply it to both and I'm just setting my base tone and my gloss amount so the color and the gloss and uh, I think that was the tip color as well which you've seen there and I've got how much metallicness the hair has got sometimes you get that really metallic looking hair and also the alpha level and bump um, the the variation from base the way that works is it takes the 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 grayscale or color values and tries to mix them in uh, or not and this is me changing the the other settings here for the anisotropic effect you can change the width that's the exponent and the highlight and there's two of them and you mix them together. And quite often you get a little highlight of the colour of the hair towards the, the crown of the hair, the top of the head. So you can see a little bit more of the colour and then that falls off into like a second highlight. So that's where you get the both highlights from. I'm just toggling the light here because it's super bright but you can change the strength of it there. Uh, this is supposed to be brown here, so I'm just changing different values. Uh, the base tip color power, so the tip color power is driven from another texture, but it's also driven from the grayscale value. And if you look at the documentation, I believe it's the, the green channel holds a little bit of uh, power to drive that tip color. Now the shader, the shader could use another version, so I will be working on a, a, another version which takes into account uh, current hair shader systems and works kind of alongside them but I'm waiting on more feedback before I do another update. And you can see there when you look through the back of it there was the subsurface scattering like the hair's picking up light from the other side and it's getting sent round to the, the back of it. And you can see in the preview there it looks quite nice. So it's just a case of fine tuning stuff until it looks good. Now the texture maps that came with this hair, they weren't too detailed, so a little bit later in the video I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a way to get the uh get some of the nice detail back using um Photoshop. So I'm just making another hair, I'm making a black hair here. Again I'll just take it, I'll transfer it onto the both of the hair shells and make that dark. And the highlight color, I also need to make that dark because that has a, a strong effect. <clears throat> now it's picking up a lot of skylight, so you can see the reflection probe picks up the skylight and it sends it into anything that's got any specularity in it. So that's what you're seeing the blue tint come from. So if you were to change the sky color then you would see that it would affect 
here realistically. <coughs> Excuse me. So base color gloss again, just making it a little bit glossy, not too much that it looks wet or you know unnatural. And then the base tip color, I can change the power of it with the alpha channel, so how much of the that dark color gets through. And then the alpha level for the the transparency. Uh, I'm using the mod one shader, I believe here. There's also um, there's also a more advanced version of the shader. You see that's looking quite nice, and it's also reflecting a light source nearby, a blue and a purple light. You can see adding in and a directional light. And you can play with these values, spread and noise. Noise is supposed to be driven from the blue channel and the main base tone alpha texture. Um, so if there's no noise in there, all it does is it plays a little bit with the spread value. So you kind of get a little bit of both. Um, so I may modify that later so that it's, it's more apparent. But either way, it does, it does what it's supposed to do for the, the time being with very little maps added. Uh, the more advanced shader has got three texture map slots, so you got your base and your normal map, and then uh, a kind of three-way map that does a little bit extra, and you might find that more useful. Can you see it's really reflecting that blue there? So I'm just going to change, uh, making a a blue here. nice effect and it's really picking up some browns and reds from the the light source nearby so don't be too confused with that that's just to show you that it does pick up those other lights there's two point lights and a directional light directional lights uh, by default I think a little bit yellow white and then you, there's a red point light and a blue point light so I'm just showing you there's mod 1 and there's the mod 1 transparent but you can see the problems you get with that uh, there's the more advanced one where I was talking about there's the extra slot so that's hair strand coloring and you get the three different strands that's what that does so if I've just popped a map in there that, that comes with it and you can play with that now I've not included uh, these hair wigs in the project just because they might be copyright and I don't want to infringe anything so I've had to keep those aside just for this video but if you find any uh, any current hair wigs um, online from any resource then you can use it so I'm just wary of the copyright and I don't want it to get out there I think it belongs to a big company so I need to be careful with things like that okay so see I'm playing with these three values that I'm getting from that and able to get loads of variation and it is looking quite a bit rough those, those textures so I'm going to go into that soon and I'm just playing with the highlights again and you can tint the highlights and tint tint pretty much everything a lot of the instead of using sliders for things I've put things into the alpha channel like just changing the alpha channel of some of these colors especially the ones up there where there's a hyphen it says base color hyphen gloss that means in the alpha channel uh, it's controlling the gloss like this one the alpha channel will control the so that alpha slider will change the gloss. Not in all of them, only ones that have the hyphen in the name or an underscore. Usually the underscore is to do with the texture. It's kind of the way I work. If it's in the texture, I'll do an underscore. And if it's driven by the color, I'll do a dash. So you can see the those, uh, those hair wigs are looking pretty nice now. We've got an orange, blonde, brown, black, and blue. Um, and you can go crazy with it. You can make green and red and you know blue and yellow and, and just go crazy with it. Um, and there is other videos where I show how I, I work in those different uh, and drive those different uh, like tip masks and things. Uh, and I say I might I might do another iteration of the shader just that it's more clearer because it's easy to get mixed up with a shader that's a little bit complex. Um, Okay, so this is some of the older set, and here's the the ones I've just been playing with, and you can see they look a little bit noisy. 
the texture maps that came with this were really low quality, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into those in a second. You can see how that anisotropy falls off the top of the hair and things, and, and then you get the subsurface scatter coming through. And I don't think I changed very many of those values for the subsurface scatter, so uh, definitely worth a, a play at. You see how rough that looks there. Black one looks not too bad until you get a bit closer. Same with the brown. You can see how now with this hair map, like all the all the hairs been pretty much brushed in manually. Um, it's like they've they've planned where the hair is going to go and then sculpted on it and then made these you know hair alphas. So here I'm just opening the texture with Photoshop and show you a little trick that I do here. So hold on a second. Just try to like wonder why these got strange names. Uh yeah, but really generic code names. So these these aren't in the project, um, but you can by all means find or create your own. I've added a couple of extra hair planes in the scene as well that that I'm gonna show you. Okay, so Got these texts, I'm just loading each in, each one in. A normal map and the grayscale and whatever else I've got there. Okay. So if you zoom in you'll see it is a bit rough and noisy. And one of the things I do is well I'm gonna scale it up to 2048, double the size, and then I use stylize oil paint and as you can see, it, it kind of brushes at the lines, so it goes with the, the flow that it finds, it, and it pulls at those. So I think that was enough for that one. This one I'm going to do the same. Filter, other, offset. Uh, what's that for? On oh, no, oil paint, sorry, filter, oil paint. I often use offset, that's why I said it. You can see how clean the lines look now in each of those channels. So again with this one filter just zooming in there. Oh yeah, I've just repeated the last action, that's what that was. And so what it does is it just pulls those lines a bit nicer. So I've saved everything back out. Just overwrite those files. checking there's nothing in the alpha there because it was only 24 bit okay so it's updated those and already they are a good bit cleaner so yeah all I've done is bring in those meshes and the textures and applied them to the current shader and you can see they work quite nicely I'm just going to build and play in the viewport uh, in a standalone I've got a little script attached to the camera that lets me move around uh, like I was using modeling software and you can see I've got these hair planes that I added with different levels, different grades of uh, hair strokes and I've just put them together to show you that kind of nice silky hair look that you can get potentially. You see how it's reflecting the red light there as well. Um, and the different blend modes for each of them. So some of these, they've got the back face uh, culled like this one. Uh, some are, are a mix of each other. If you look from the top, there's a combination of each. So these two on the left and up on the right, they, they combine to make that one. And these two combine to make this one and so on. And then the two back ones left and right make that, uh, that one just before. And then the main one at the front is the advanced uh, one that's done the rest of them. 
and it is, it's quite a broad range shader. It will cover uh, anime and manga style and also kind of semi, semi realistic. And the harder you drive your texture maps, the better you can get from it. And any requests you've got, just let me know if you if you want something, a feature added, I'll make a variation of the shader just uh, for you, but I, I will make it available for everyone in the next update as well. But please don't hesitate to get in touch and I'll endeavor to make improvements. I'm quite happy with it so far. I've made a lot of changes over time, but I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, feel free to comment. Thank you. Bye.